Creation Workshop 6.2. This time we're going to look at Google Docs. Now Google Docs is a great tool that's online. You can use it, access it from any platform. However, you can actually use it in a really collaborative way. Now, more than likely you've already had, the, had a go at this. I'm just going to give you some examples of when I've used them in class. So this is Year 9 Theory um, in IT. Right, we went through uh, basically uh, two whole chapters of work. Each chapter then had sub-chapters. And what we did was get each student or couple of students were given one section or chapter to read through. And what they had to do was read it and then note take it. So if I go down to um, 2.1, you can see hardware function notes, and they've researched what is the hardware in the computer. So they've gone through, they've written all their notes, and this is what they've come up with. All right, and then 2.2 was the next pair of students. Now, this here, I'll just go up here, tools, word count. So this is three and a half thousand words, right? Which is not that much, except that this class did this in a, in a single lesson or double lesson. So in about an hour and a half, they've done all the notes from chapter 2.1 to 2.4 and 12.1 to 12.9. Now, the beauty of this is each student is contributing to the shared knowledge, right? So this is more the um, cooperation where you are dividing it up and getting each student to, each student is then presenting the stuff. It could also be shared, just simple sharing. Um, and to give you a show you how to do this, if I go into, this is a document I've started up already. So say that we want this to be um, student teachers, student teachers, student teachers notes on uh, problem-based learning. Let's go with that, problem, sorry, problem-based learning. Now, as soon as I click up here, it should change that. Now, here, if I, all I need to do is click share, get a shareable link, and anyone with a link can edit. You can do comment as well, but they have to put in their, their account. And then anyone with this, with this link can get on. Now, that's a huge link. Not a great way of doing it. So what we can do is go tiny URL, Ooh. Yep. So tiny URL, we paste in this link in here and I go make a tiny URL. And what it does is it's now shortened it to this. Okay. So that makes it easier for your students to um, log in because all they need is to do tinyurl.com forward slash hn3pz09. All right, and if I copy that, you'll see. It'll take me straight to our Google Drive, our Google document. Now, what you can do in here, and you're all welcome to use this, um, please write your ideas for problem-based learning. Now, problem with this is that when I'm doing it, I've already, re already recorded this, but when you're watching this, jump on and put in some ideas of what you think. What, when would you do problem-based learning? When have you done problem-based learning? All right? uh, and when you're on there, you'll notice that other people have added to it and contributed to the same thing. Um, I've done this in class many years ago, um, and I said, how could Mr. Johnson improve his teaching? Now, the, what, the problem with that was, the students all jumped on and they all started to post their ideas or write their ideas. It took them about five minutes to realize it was completely anonymous, and then they just started going crazy. They posted 400 different comments in about a 10 minute period. Um, things like, please Mr. Johnson, don't eat your custard tart in class in front of us because we're really jealous. Or um, please let us play games in class or so on. And some of it was really constructive, it was great. But what you have to realize is if you're not getting to log in, that you, you've got full, you're opening up full control to any student in the class to muck around. I've seen students delete things and it, was, it can be quite messy. Now. Uh, one thing you can do though is you can view, uh, sorry, you can, where are your tools, uh, script editor, add ons, no, sorry, apologize, see revision history. So here you can actually go back and see what people have done in the past. All right, so when people have done it, so it started as a blank document and now I've added this in, and you can actually 
um, restore this revision. So if I restore this, we'll go back to being nothing. So you can see all this and sw switch back and forth. So if someone happens to delete it, you can bring it all back. So that's a good thing. All right, I would know, the other way you can do this as well is you can um, set up it. This is a, um, if I go a new document, uh, and this might be an essay, um, in class essay. Okay, and then I could share this with just one student, their email address. All right, and that, so I could make a series of essays and get each student to be writing this, and then I can watch them write their essay. So I can have all the different files opened, right, all the different Word documents open, and as this, or Google documents open, and as, and as a different tab, and I just click, 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 and that's so I can go from one to the next, and I can see them working. So you can actually see the writing the essay in process or in progress. You don't see the final copy, you actually see all of it in progress. There's some really great tools you can use on Google, such as Dr. Puss, which does this really well, and Goobrix for marking. Um, I'm not gonna go into that in detail at the moment. You can look it up on YouTube. They are fantastic tools. Anyone And any school that's got a G Suite, which is the Google Suite apps, um, it's amazing. Uh, I would suggest get in and have a go at that. So this is an example of Google Docs. There are so many different ways you can use it in class.